So we're ready now to start thinking about conservative vector fields. And I want you to note, when we talk about conservative vector fields, this name is related to the conservation of energy. So here's our formal definition. We say that a vector field, F, is said to be conservative on some region in R2 or R3 if there exists a scalar-valued function, phi, such that the vector field F is equal to the gradient of phi. So in other words, we can say, let's suppose that vector field F is in R3. So if F is conservative, then the vector with components F, G, H is equal to the vector with components composed by the partial derivatives with respect to each variable. So again, a vector field is said to be conservative in R2 or R3 if there exists a scalar-valued function such that vector f is equal to the gradient of the potential function, or the gradient of phi. So how do we test if a vector field is conservative? That's a great question. Let's take a peek. So here we establish a way to test if a vector field is a conservative vector field. So to get us started, we want to suppose that vector f with components f, g, h has continuous first order partial derivatives in space or in some region d and r3. And we want to assume that vector f is conservative such that vector f is defined by the gradient of our potential function phi, and we know this is equal to the vector whose components are made up of the partial derivatives with respect to each variable. So from here, to establish this test, we're going to match the corresponding components. So since we know that our vector field is equal to the gradient of phi, this implies that the vector f g h is equal to the gradient of phi. So we have phi sub x, or the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, and the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. And so now we want to match the corresponding components. So we can say that therefore f is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, we can see that g is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y. And we can also see that h is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. So these are our three matching components that are going to be important as we proceed in establishing this test. So to establish this test, I want you to recall way back in section 13.8 that we saw that if a function f has continuous second order partials, then the order of the mixed partials doesn't matter. So remember, this is saying that the partial derivative of our function f with respect to x, y is equivalent to the partial derivative of y with respect to x. So we're going to use this theorem to establish equivalence relationships amongst these three matching components. So let's think about the matching components that we just established. We know that f is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. We have that g is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y. And that h is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. And so now we're going to go ahead and use the, the theorem for the equality of mixed ordered partials and then continue matching terms. So starting with f here, we notice that this is the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. So we want to now differentiate with respect to the other variables y and z. So we can say that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is going to be equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to xy, and that the partial derivative of z, or excuse me, of f with respect to z is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to xz.
So moving on to our second case here, we have that g is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y. And again, we want to differentiate with respect to the other two variables, x and z. So we have the partial derivative of g with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to yx. And we have that the partial derivative of g with respect to z is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to yz. And last but not least, we think about how h is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. And now we want to differentiate with respect to the other two variables. So we have the partial derivative of h with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to zx. And last but not least, we have the partial derivative of h with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to zy. Whew. So at this point, we want to look at this giant list of partial derivatives here and match the terms. So we are starting with the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, y. And we look down our list until we see, hey, here is another one that matches because we know the order doesn't matter. So what this is telling us is that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of g with respect to x. And this is because the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, y is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, x. So next, moving right down our list here, we are looking at the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, z. And moving down the list, we see, hey, this one matches because the order doesn't matter. So this allows us to conclude that the partial derivative of f with respect to z is equal to the partial derivative of h with respect to x. And again, this is because the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, z is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to z, x. And last but not least, we only have two remaining here, and we can see that they match because the order y, z, or z, y, doesn't matter by our theorem. So this allows us to conclude that therefore, the partial derivative of g with respect to z is equal to the partial derivative of h with respect to y. And this again is because the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, z is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to z, y. And so this here, these three equivalents or equivalences are our test. When we're asked to determine if a vector field is conservative, we want to check that our three cases here, these all, uh, all three cases are equivalent, that these partial derivatives are the same. And one little fun fact here, so again, this is the test in R3 but we've actually established a test for R2 as well. So you want to note that for a vector field F in R2, we can check that F is conservative using case one. So we can check that F, our vector field is conservative using the partial derivative of f with respect to y and making sure that it's equal to the partial derivative of g with respect to x.